Hello, my dear friends, and welcome to my channel. Get yourself comfortable and prepare for some interesting stories. One of them is a story about a crazy woman who wants to sue the school for wanting to cure her kid. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I hope you'll enjoy it. I'm a youth sports coach, and whatever stories you've heard about insane parents, it can be even worse than that. I'm in a league where parents are already planning out their kids' target colleges before they can walk. But most kids are completely average, because that's what average means. And because other schools have the luxury of players who want to participate. I have kids who are pressured into the game by mom and dad, so don't bring the same heart to the field. It makes it quite difficult to read them. For example, I only just got free of a dispute that's been ongoing for over three months. A sweet but clumsy sophomore who has fun with his teammates but is overall completely indifferent to the sport, was out indefinitely with a serious rotator cuff injury. He'd had surgery, he was still sitting in on practices at his parents' insistence, but by no means was he taking one step in the direction of the field. He never complained or protested, like my diehard kids who want to be here do, often to their own detriment. He was just as happy to sit playing video games. Great. The best player you can hope for is the one who doesn't rush recovery. I was proud and relieved by how he was handling things. So one day, not even three weeks after his surgery, his mom shows up and says, All right, my son's been cleared to play. He can start back today. Maybe someone should take some time to work with him one-on-one -on -one to get him caught up, hmm? I was surprised, but I'm not a doctor. So if they cleared him, He's clear, but as protocol, I asked for an official letter from the medical office approving him to return to practice for the team's files. His mom was flabbergasted. I don't have it with me. Who carries that around? It hadn't even occurred to me she might be doing something so brazen and reckless as what she was. So, without skipping a beat, I cheerfully said, no worries. You can hang with us while you run home or fax or email it to me. She stuttered for a second and finally came up with, I don't have time to go all the way back home. I have another appointment. It was then that I noticed her son was looking kind of uncomfortable throughout all this. And, while he wasn't the most enthusiastic guy, I would have still expected him to be psyched to return to practice after sitting patiently on the sidelines for such a long hiatus. So while I might have agreed to wait to the next day to see the letter in any other case, Knowing the player would start back by easing in very slowly regardless, I knew this time I had to see written proof before so much as giving the kid a light stretch routine. I told mom, so, I'll just give his doctor's office a call and they can send the letter to us. It's still early, we can catch them if we call right now. And stood there, expectantly, waiting for her to call. She gasped and stuttered some more before finally blurting out, he isn't being treated by a Western Big Pharma doctor. He's on essential oil regimen. I didn't know whether to laugh or start shouting. It was so ridiculous that she was even positing treating an internal injury with essential oils. But even more so infuriating that she would risk her own son's health just to get him back in practice a few weeks early. I couldn't tell straight away if she genuinely thought the oils had healed his shoulder which still visibly appeared to be causing him pain. Or, if she was just saying that to try and get out of producing the letter, she didn't have because she was seeing a doctor who had not cleared him yet. I was stuck at the point and called another coach over to confer privately. After giving her a rundown of the situation, she suggested a foolproof plan. I returned to the boy's mother and said, So, I just talked with some other members of the staff and have great news. The team physician can do a routine post-op exam right now and write a letter. Thankfully, she didn't call my bluff, because while we do have a team physician, you have to make an appointment with him a week or more in advance. So his mother says she isn't comfortable with him seeing a strange doctor. I reiterate, this is our team physician, who has assisted her son whenever he's been injured on the field, not a stranger to him. She pivoted back to not trusting Western medicine and wanting to maintain the essential oils plan. She started going off about how all these scans are going to do is give him radiation poisoning, etc. So I told her I couldn't help her, 
and sent her on her way. Her son was mouthing sorry curts to me as she gave her speech and I knew then that I had done the right thing. You could see in his eyes he did not have anything to do with this scheme to rush back on the field. She stormed off absolutely irate, cursing me and even some players from her own son's team who passed her on the way out and continued making the scene in the front until someone from marching band practice asked her to leave because they literally could not hear all the instruments with the way she was carrying on. Not even 24 hours later, the principal and head of athletics each had letters from a law firm accusing us of discriminating against her son, preventing him from playing because of the family's belief in alternative medicine. To be abundantly clear, a shoulder injury is very serious, especially at her son's age. If he didn't do the proper steps for recovery, he could be stuck with a lifetime of pain. And it's not just never play sports again, but never lift anything or hold basic positions without mind-bending pain. Not to mention the potentially permanent mobility problems were he to re-injure himself by playing contact sports while hurt. So in short, this was a matter of way more than jostling for authority with a parent of personal views about health care. It was an issue of my player's physical safety and a hill I was more than willing to die on. I was prepared to go out of my own pocket for a lawyer and say all that in court, if need be. I was in no position to do so financially, but I didn't care. Like I said, I would die on this hill. The principal showed the letter to his lawyer wife, who suggested we ignore it and see if the kid's mom would just tire of investing time and money into this situation. I know what you're thinking, and you're exactly right. She was not going down that easy. She was back with a lawyer in person at practice the following week. He tried to tell me something about how, as a team at a public school, I cannot prevent her son from participating because of the family's personal beliefs. And every child had the right to do public school activities. No, oh, I couldn't be further from a lawyer, but that was still easy even for me. Guy, this is a tryout team. No one is guaranteed participation, and I can cut players for any reason I see fit. That stimmied him, and I think he told the boy's mother that she was out of options. But I guess she kept sending him checks because he kept writing us letters. Out of an abundance of caution, since you never know how far a crazy person is willing to take things like this, or how much money she had to pursue the issue, I had to consult with an attorney of my own. I gave her all the documents to review, and when she was finished laughing uncontrollably, she told me not to think twice about this, and to only come back if I was served with the actual papers to appear in court. Six weeks later, I was back in her office. The boy's mother was bringing the school into a civil suit, and I had been called to testify. I met with the lawyer, and I'm lucky she was honest. She told me the district would probably have counsel for me and to wait before cutting her any checks. She was right. So I was in a big, harried meeting preparing for this case. All the team boosters were there, top administrators I'd only ever heard the name of but never seen in person and even more people who I've already forgotten because these meetings were such a stressful blur. It was getting very serious very quickly. More than once I was pulled aside by someone with more important places to be and asked if I couldn't just clear the kid to play. By the time things began to wrap up, I was making good and frequent use of that Randy Jackson meme. Yeah, that's going to be a no for me, dog. We were about a week and a half out from the first official court date and in serious discussions with school's council about actually just buying these people off the team and settling out of court, if they agreed to walk away from the sport and drop the issue. No one wanted to hear me explain all the reasons why that wouldn't work. I was just leaving a smaller one of these strategy meetings when I saw the kid loitering outside my office. I knew I wasn't supposed to speak to any of them, but the kid had been really cool throughout the whole ordeal. And he definitely wished he wasn't associated with any of his mom's wild antics. So I cautiously approached, and before I could say anything, the kid drags his dad out from around the corner. His dad seemed concerned his wife might drop out of the ceiling grate or something, but his son was determined and prodded him, going, Do it. Let's go. His dad, keeping his head on the constant swivel, quietly said, I understand you can have my son cleared by a team physician? I nodded and the dad hesitated, but the son was clearly fed up 
and staring daggers at man goes, Okay then, let's get freaking going. Sign what you need to sign for me to see who I need to see. My guess is he didn't want to be known as the player who had testified against his team. Because parents are chatty and everyone at school definitely knew about what was going on. The poor henpeck guy kept saying quietly enough that his son couldn't hear. Listen, my wife ever found out about this. Holy heck. Can you please just not make a big scene with it? Just say he was cleared to play. No need to advertise how it happened, okay? I assured him that not only would I never advertise a student's private business for a social clout, but that when it came to medical issues, I was legally prohibited from sharing information with anyone. So I sent one of the only messages flagged, urgent, that I have ever had to direct to our team doctor, and by the end of the day, our Holly Relief strategy team was able to place a call, informing the mother that her son was cleared to return to practice. Now, don't get it twisted. I didn't ram his recovery paperwork through a back channel to end the suit or alleviate pressure from the administration. His mom had dragged this whole ordeal out so long that he'd actually fully healed. Our doctor was able to pass him with flying colors. She still isn't the worst parent I've ever had to deal with hostility-wise, but certainly the most serious matter. Other people get into it with us over playing time or game schedules, or even their kid's uniform number. This is the only one I can remember being this negligent with her son's physical well-being, so I'll always rank Tyus as my worst parent experience. It was just finally confirmed that I'm 100% free from all legal hoo-ha, so I can gleefully share the story with strangers at least. Don't want to put the kid on blast in our tiny community, but do want to vent to the whole bunch of people. I guarantee that if you had that kid play without being properly cleared, and he got injured, re-injured, the same woman would be suing you. Isn't that why you get medical grants before letting a kid play? I know a couple of people who have permanent injuries because of high school sports. None of these people are ever going to be professional athletes. First of all, a touch of a backstory. I wrote the stories about the entitled parents locking the park gate around a year ago. I have since moved out of the house with my parents, and I wasn't going to tell this story because it's a little old, but hey, here we go. My family, me, my mom, my stepdad, who I should refer to as dad since he basically is, had just been shopping, and we were driving back home when we pulled into our estate. As we were driving down our road, we saw a woman we didn't recognize standing in the path, but we thought nothing of it. Our road is next to a school, so lots of people tend to stand around. We pulled into our parking spot and we began loading up shopping bags to take to the house, which was down a pedestrian path and round a bend, out of view of the car. We walked down to the house and we put our shopping bags on the counter. Then my dad stopped me. Dad, I think I left a few bags in the boot. Can you run and grab them? I agreed and he threw me the car keys. I went outside and as I walked towards the car, I saw that our car boot was open and someone was inside. My dad forgot to lock the car. It was the woman we saw before rummaging around in our shopping bags and her arms were full of biscuits, cakes, and a pack of hogs. Me, um, uh, excuse me, what the heck are you doing? I don't know she is a mother yet, but she is, so I'll be calling her EM. EM. I'm just getting the shopping out of my car. Why is that your business? Me. This isn't your car. I have the keys. This is my dad's car. So, what are you doing? Yeah. I was waiting for my babies to finish school, and we needed some food for the house. You left these here and walked away, so I'm taking them instead of you people wasting them. Me. We weren't wasting them. We need food too. And buy it. Don't take ours. Yeah. But we hate shopping. And this is so much easier. Can you please just give it to me? Me. No. Sorry. Then I proceed to take the food from her, close the car, and lock it. The entire time I'm getting grief from her as she calls me all sorts of names. And proceeds to strum off to presumably ruin someone else's day. Not really advice on the situation, but any future ones with these idiots, if they literally admit to theft or are literally begging for all hell, just get your dad involved if that goes to an escalated point, i.e. needing self-defense, getting threatened, baldy, etc. Pretty sure he could deal with something like this and help out as well. 
Well guys, that's it for today. If you end up enjoying this video, please consider subscribing. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, I'm going to link it right here. The story is about a crazy woman who is looking for her daughter at the library and cops. So watch what will happen next. Check this out if you haven't, and I'll see you in my next video.